This educational video explains the process and different applications of real-time fluorescence imaging with endocyanine green in laparoscopic procedures. The new Olympus imaging platform, Visera Elite 2, is the ideal solution for real-time fluorescence imaging. Real-time fluorescence imaging can only be performed with infrared light. Therefore, a dedicated laparoscope and light source is needed. The infrared laparoscope uses a unique filter technology that provides a clear infrared image without interference radiation. The xenon light source provides a bright and clear white light image. During this white light mode, a filter is activated, which suppresses the infrared radiation to give a pure white light image only. Additionally, the light source delivers a strong infrared radiation. After switching to infrared mode, the filter in the light source changes. The infrared wavelength passes through and the red wavelengths are suppressed. Infrared radiation uses an optical window in human tissue to penetrate deeper cavities of up to 8 millimeters. Consequently, it stimulates the ICG that is bound to the plasma protein. The interfering reflected radiation is blocked by the optical filter to ensure a clear and distortion-free image. The fluorescence light passes through the optical filter in the laparoscope. This enables surgeons to work in two different infrared modes. IR mode 1 with high illumination to detect detailed structures even under infrared light. IR mode 2 shows the pure fluorescence mode with the highest contrast in a black and white image. In addition to the infrared imaging system, a special dye is required for fluorescence imaging. The dye currently available for real-time fluorescence imaging is endocyanine green, in short, ICG. ICG absorbs the infrared radiation from the light source and emits longer wavelengths of infrared radiation. This makes it detectable in the human body. Usually supplied as a dry powder, sterile water must be added to the dye. The ICG powder dissolves when the bottle is shaken. The dissolved solution is aspirated with a syringe and is then usually injected intravenously. The fluorescent solution enters the bloodstream and immediately binds to plasma proteins. On the monitor, a fluorescent image can be seen wherever ICG appears and is excited with infrared light. Finally, ICG spreads through the vascular system and is eventually cleared by the liver. The time frame of the dissolved ICG depends on the patient and procedure. There are three common laparoscopic procedures in which real-time fluorescence imaging can be used. These applications have been tested accordingly and the results published in several studies. One application is resection in the lower or upper gastrointestinal tract, such as the resection of the esophagus or the colon. In this video, we will explain the application in colorectal surgery. Here, the fluorescent solution is injected intravenously as described before. The dye binds to plasma proteins and immediately shows the vascularization. The well-perfused parts are bright green, and the ischemic parts are not green. There are numerous indications that demand a partial resection of the colon, such as in colon cancer, polyps, or inflammation. After the dissection of the target area, the diseased part of the colon is located in conventional white light. The arteries leading to the colon segment that has to be removed are clamped, and the diseased part is resected. ICG can be injected and used to control the perfusion of the two open ends of the colon before the stapler is used. This helps to identify the perfused stapler line. Ischemic parts of the colon show no signs of green fluorescence. To prevent anastomotic leaks, the ischemic parts have to be resected as well. The next opportunity to use ICG is after performing anastomosis. Dissolved ICG can be injected again to check if the colon is well perfused around anastomotic site. Before the injection, 
the surgeon should check if there is any fluorescence dye left from the first injection. If the colon is well perfused, the procedure can be finished as usual. Another application is the resection of the gallbladder. Possible indications for a cholecystectomy include gallstones or inflammation in the gallbladder. During a cholecystectomy, the anatomy of the ducts is critical to remove the gallbladder safely. The differentiation of the anatomy can be challenging, making it difficult to distinguish between the cystic and the common bile duct. Again, the fluorescent solution is injected intravenously. The surgeon has to wait approximately 45 minutes for the dye to reach the liver and clear into the bile ducts. Since ICG binds to proteins in the bile, the infrared image allows a good view of the site and shows Kallet's triangle even under the fatty tissue. IR highlights the structures of the ducts and helps to identify them. Without fluorescence imaging, the common bile duct is sometimes misinterpreted as the cystic duct. With infrared fluorescence imaging and ICG, it is much easier to distinguish between the ducts. Both cystic artery and duct are clamped, cut, and the gallbladder can be removed. Consequently, this standard procedure is made easier with better identification of the ducts, which may reduce the risk of bile duct injuries. Another common application for real-time infrared fluorescence imaging is sentinel lymph node mapping during gynecologic oncology procedures. This procedure will be explained using the indication of a cervical or endometrial tumor. In this particular application, an intravenous injection of the dye is not required. For sentinel lymph node mapping, several studies suggest that the dye should be injected peritumorally. In this particular case, ICG should be injected transvaginally at two or four points into the cervix. After five to 10 minutes, ICG reaches the sentinel lymph nodes on both sides as it binds to plasma proteins in the lymph. The sentinel lymph nodes now fluoresce under IR radiation and can therefore be detected below the fatty tissue. After examination of the sentinel nodes, the next step can be decided. A total lymphadenectomy may be avoidable.